Hey, today I'll be showing you how to create this really cool cutout paper title screen that I stole from the movie What We Do in the Shadows. While making this title screen, we'll also go over a couple techniques for making better glows and going over a really easy way to create edge lighting for text or anything, really. Also, as a side note, this movie's pretty funny and you should you should check it out after. I will do my dishes! So to get started, I'll import this parchment texture that I pulled off good old Google. This is going to be our paper that we cut into to reveal the light behind it, which will form our title or anything else you want to show. So now to get started making our cutout element, I'll make a new text layer and write out my title. After that, I'm going to right click it, pre-compose moving all attributes and rename it to cutout element. The reason we're pre-composing this is so that it's easier for us to change our text or replace it with whatever else we want later on. Now back in the main comp, let's set our parchment's track mat to alpha inverted so that it uses the alpha of our cutout element to cut out. Cut out. And now that we've got this, we'll need to make the lit up layer that'll go behind it and shine through the hole we just cut. So I'll duplicate the parchment and cutout element, right click it and pre-compose, and then we'll just call this exactly what it's going to be. Just some lit paper. Inside of our lit paper comp, let's get rid of the track mat on the parchment layer, make the layer 3D, and then add a point light by going to layer new light, making sure it's actually a point light. While we're here, we might as well set up its color too, which will want to be something a little bit warmer than pure white, so I'll set the hue to orange and give it a little bit of saturation just under halfway. I'll also lower the intensity a bit down to like 70%, then go ahead and create the light. Once we've done that, we should see lighting effects show up for the parchment layer since we made it 3D earlier. What we want to do now is hit P on the light to bring up its position, and we're going to move its Z values so that the light only lights up a small area. And I mean really small. The After Effects lights seem to get a lot stronger, like too strong when you create more of them, so when we end up duplicating our light in a sec, it's going to be way too bright, unless we make this pretty small. For now though, let's just stick with one light, because we've got to set up some wiggle expressions to its position and intensity to give it a little bit more life. And if you're new to the wiggle expression or just want to brush up, I've got a full video on what it is and tips on how to use it in some creative ways that you should check out. And now that the plug is over, let's get to it. Starting with the positions wiggle, hold alt or option and click on the position stopwatch to bring up the expression box and then type in w equals wiggle then open some brackets 0.2 comma 100, close the brackets and then end it with a semicolon. And now what we've got here is a wiggle that moves by 100 units 0.2 times per second. Feel free to play around with the values to get the look that you want, but the look I'm after is a light that moves a good amount, but not very sporadically. Now to actually have our wiggle affect the position, on the next line in some square brackets I'll write w0, comma, w1 divided by 5, comma, value 2. With this line we're making the light move on the x-axis according to the wiggle, on the y-axis with one-fifth of the wiggle, and the z-axis will be whatever we set it to. It won't be affected by our wiggle at all. The reason I set it up like this is so that we can place the light somewhere and not have it moving all over the place. We know that it'll move left and right a little bit to give it some life, but it won't be making crazy up and down movements on us so that we have a little bit of control over the composition of the scene and the lights even though we're introducing this random movement using wiggle. Next, let's expand our lights options to get to the intensity and alt or option click that as well to open up its expression box and write a simple wiggle this time. Something like wiggle 5 comma 10 so that it changes by 10% 5 times per second. Now that we've got our light set up and looking decent, we can duplicate it as many times as we want and position them. For text like this, I'll just have one light per row of text, and if you want, you can slightly change their intensity wiggles to get them a little bit different from one another. The last thing we need to do here is give it more of a glowing, bright look. Now, this part is a little complicated, so try to follow along, and feel free to pause or like rewind if you have to. But we're going to start by duplicating the parchment layer, then I'll set the top one's blending mode to overlay, and then- Oh, we're, we're done already. We're done. We, we did it. That's it. Now let's head back to the main comp and move the lit paper below the parchment layer and check out what we're working with. Oof, that is rough. Before adding edge lighting, let's make this a little more bearable for the sake of our eyes. On the parchment layer, add a curves effect and bring down the whites a bunch. I'm going to bring a little more contrast back into it by adding a little bump here for the highlights too. Next, let's make an adjustment layer called Glow Adjustments and add a glow effect. Instead of having it glow based on the original color, set it to A and B colors, and we'll change the A color to a yellow hue around 50-60% to 60 saturation, then just use the color picker to make the B color the same. To make glows look a lot better, we can follow the same strategy as making good looking drop shadows. To put it simply, we're just going to be adding multiple weaker glows to make one glow that looks cooler. So to start off, I'll increase the radius to something like 30, decrease the intensity to 0.1, and lastly, I'll lower the threshold just a tad. Now we'll duplicate this glow, and this time lower the radius to around 20, raise the intensity to 0.2, and also decrease the threshold to around 25%, and we're done. 
If I toggle the first glow that we made, you might not be able to see that it's doing all that much, but I promise the difference becomes more obvious after we finish adding the rest of the effects. I'll also be going over another glow technique a little later on. For now though, let's make both our parchment and lit paper layers 3D. Then push the lit paper layer back a little bit, open up its material options, and set except lights to off. Because we're going to be adding a couple of lights to make our parchment look better, and we don't want them affecting our lit paper layer as well. I'll start by creating another point light. Set it to an orange hue around 50 or 60% saturation and 60% intensity. Then I'll position it just off the center line in the lower right corner and move its Z position so that it only lights up the area I want it to. Next we'll add another light, but this time we'll make it a spotlight. I'll make the color for this one a bit cooler, a cyan hue around 20% saturation with an intensity of 30. Then I'll position this light in the top right corner and point it towards the bottom left so that it shines across our parchment. Once I've got it positioned, I'll also raise the cone further to 100% to make it softer and set the cone angle to 70% to make it a little more narrow. Lastly, I'll just create a subtle wiggle for the intensity of the point light we just made. A wiggle that changes by 5%, maybe 2 times per second is fine. And now we're done with our lighting. The spotlight gives it a nice little pop and makes it look a little more interesting, although I don't know how well subtle lights like these show up after YouTube compression. Now as you can see from the reference here, the cutouts have this sort of edge light that implies light is shining on the sides of the cutout letters, and we can create something like this pretty easily using an effect called CC Light Sweep, so let's get on that next. To start off, duplicate our cutout element, pre-compose, and move all attributes. We'll name this comp Edge Light Matte. Then inside of it, add the CC Light Sweep effect to the cutout element. Before anything else, I'll just set the light reception to cutout so that instead of adding light onto our cutout element, we're left with only the light from the effect. Now as you can see, if I move this center point around, this is a pretty cool looking effect. But the first thing we need to do to give us the look we're after is to get rid of the fill light and leave only the edge light, which thankfully is pretty simple. Just set the sweep intensity down to zero. Now using the rest of the properties, we can shape the edge light we want. We can make it brighter using the edge intensity, which I'll set to 200. We can change the width to increase or decrease how much reach the effect has. I'll set it to 1000. Then I'll lower the edge thickness down to two. Now I'll just tweak the direction a little bit to make it come from the left more and move the center over to the left as well. The effect as it is right now is way too strong and covers way too much of the text, but instead of just lowering the effect's intensity or thickness, which will sort of just make the effect weaker across the board, what we'll do instead is add the simple choker effect. As we increase the choke mat, you'll see that we're crushing the weaker lines and leaving only the stronger ones. For the settings I have here, a choke mat of 2.5 works perfectly. Even though this is looking a lot better now, I want to introduce a little randomness to it so that it's not so perfect. So I'll create a new solid, rename it to Turbulent, and add the Turbulent Noise effect to it. What we're going to do is use this Turbulent Noise as a luma mat, so make sure it's above the cutout element layer and set up its track mat. Then we'll go inside the Turbulent Noise and increase its contrast to like 700. We can also tweak its scale in the Transform options to give it the look we want. I'll be lowering the scale to around 60. The last thing we'll do is select the cutout element layer, create a mask over the left half of it, and then hit F and feather it by around 20 pixels. Then I'll select both the cutout element and the Turbulent Noise layer and duplicate them. For the top cutout element, I'll just change the direction to the opposite side, move the center point as well, then hit M to bring up the mask options and change the mask to subtract. And now we've got light hitting the left side of the cutout element on the left, and light hitting the right side of the cutout element on the right, which sort of implies that the edges are being lit up from behind in the center. You can see it a little better if I take off the simple choker and track mats. Now heading back to the main comp, if we hide our lit paper layer, we can see that we've got some edge lighting. To make it blend in with our scene more, duplicate our parchment photo, make it a 2D layer again, place it underneath the cutout edge mat, and then set the parchment's track mat to alpha mat. Then go to the parchment layer's curve effect and adjust it so that the brightness looks good to you. And that's it. We've got a pretty cool edge light for our cutout. Next, let's select the lit paper layer and create a mask over each word so that we can animate each one appearing. We can do this just by keyframing each mask's opacity from 0 to 100% when we want the word to appear. After we're done that, we're left with this. We're almost done this effect now, but there are two more big things and two more little things we can add to make it look even better. Personally, I'm a fan of following the classic little big big little format, so let's start off by making this cutout layer less sharp and more realistic. To do that, all we have to do is really quickly add a fast box blur to the cutout element layer, set its blur radius to 0.2 and the iterations to 2, and if I toggle that on and off, you can see that when it's softer, it looks a little more realistic. Now onto something a little bigger. Let's give off the impression that our parchment is a tiny bit translucent as the lights behind it begin to shine. To do that, duplicate the lit paper layer, change it from 3D to 2D, place it above the parchment and cutout layers, and then rename it to translucence. Then hit F to bring up all the mask's feathers, select them all, and then set them to something like 200. After that, duplicate the cutout element layer, place it above our translucence layer, and set it to alpha inverted so that it only affects the parchment and not the letters themselves. 
finally set the opacity to 50% and then change the blending mode to soft light. And now if we play it back, the parchment also lights up softly as the cutout elements begin to light up, giving off a subtle translucent vibe. Now for the second and last big thing, we'll make our cutout element glow a lot cooler using a different glow technique. We'll start by duplicating our translucence layer and the cutout element layer it uses as a track mat and place our copies above. Then we'll rename the new translucence layer to, and this is kind of important, so make sure you're copying it exactly as I do because it might not work if you don't. Too lit, too quit. Great, so next hit F and we'll change all the mask's feathers to 100, change the track mat from alpha inverted to alpha, change the blending mode to add, and then set the opacity to 30%. Now just hide the too lit to quit layer and unhide the cutout element above it so that we can see this next part easier. What we'll be doing here is layering blur so that we have really fine control over what too lit to quit uses as its alpha mat. I'll solo the layer so that we can see it even better and start by adding a fast box blur with a big radius of 40 and only one iteration. Now, instead of just blurring this again, which won't really get us anywhere, we're going to use the effect called CC Composite, which adds the layer's original contents back on top. By default, it doesn't use the layer's original alpha, so uncheck RGB only, and then you'll see that we've got another cutout element on top of our previous one. Now we can add the next blur. So just duplicate our fast box blur, move it to the bottom of the effects stack, and change the radius to 30 and the iteration is to 20. Then, duplicate both the CC composite as well as the fast box blur underneath it, and this time set the next blur to a radius of 10 and iterations of 10, and we'll do this one more time, setting the radius to 5. Toggling them all on one at a time, this is what it looks like. Now finally, if we unsolo the layer, hide it again, and then unhide the too lit to quit layer, we can see what our cool custom glow looks like. Last but not least, to help tie it all together, we'll use the add grain effect on the adjustment layer, tweak the settings to make it less harsh, create a new null, parent everything to the null, and then animate the scale to give our title a little bit of movement. And that's it. That's how I made the What We Do in the Shadows title screen. I hope you picked up a tip or two along the way, and of course this effect isn't just limited to text and isn't just limited to this color and vibe, you can get a bunch of different looks from this. Now if this is the first video of mine you've seen, you should definitely check out some other ones, and if you like those too, then consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss any videos.